The neuroendovascular service is a combined service of the Department of Neurological Surgery and Radiology, and this bespeaks the um, hybrid nature of this specialty. Uh, it's developed over the last 20, 25 years uh, from an experimental process trying to treat patients who are otherwise untreatable using conventional neurosurgical techniques, and in many cases now, um, these endovascular procedures have become primary or preferred uh, treatment modalities. The principal conditions we treat are strokes. Uh, there are two types of strokes, both ischemic and hemorrhagic. So a lot of effort initially to identify when did the stroke start, how can we best tell, figuring out is the uh, stroke a bleeding kind of stroke or a, uh, an ischemic stroke, a vessel blockage stroke. And if it's the vessel blockage type, they may be eligible for this clot-busting drug, TPA. Many patients, though, are not eligible for the clot busting drug because it's too far after the stroke started. Then it falls into the realm of an endovascular procedure where we go in and try to reopen the vessel by removing the blockage. Unlike heart attack where the um, onset is often accompanied by severe chest pain, stroke is often the absence of a function. So whether or not people recognize they're having it can be a problem, and in some cases a stroke actually robs the patient of the ability to recognize that they're having a stroke. So if we can get a hold of patients quickly, there are many treatments we can offer them. Some have been well um, documented and are FDA approved, and some of them are on the cutting edge. New York Presbyterian Columbia has a rich history in the treatment of, of arteriovenous malformations. Our treatment results in, in a large series uh, are among the uh, best published anywhere in the world. Uh, so I think we have a highly developed uh, team of neurologists, neurosurgeons, neuroradiologists who address this problem. And although it's a rare condition, it's one of the most common entities that we uh, treat here and we do it better. It's been shown in a number of studies that large centers such as New York Presbyterian Columbia will do better at treating patients, so our outcomes are better. We have research protocols at every level in order to offer patients the cutting edge treatments that are available for their conditions. The patients will have the benefit of many different perspectives. There may be many people who could contribute to the diagnosis saying, well, what about this? Something that, that a single physician might not have thought of, somebody else with a fresh perspective. Even a medical student or a resident, for instance, can suggest something that could have been overlooked theoretically. We have vascular surgeons, uh, cardiologists, neuroradiologists, neurosurgeons, all of whom will overlap perhaps on a given type of procedure, and each group can bring a very specific perspective. For instance, uh, one of the uh, cardiologists and I will often collaborate on a procedure and perform it together because of my skill in uh, diagnosis of brain abnormality and stroke. I complement, for instance, his skill perhaps in the uh, catheterization or use of a tool that I may not have used as often. Working together, I think we uh, offer uh, better outcomes.